Welcome to highlights of the finals day at Henley Royal Regatta. It is dull overhead, but that hasn't taken the shine off some amazing racing. So who is going to steal a little piece of glory today? Here's the best of the morning's races. Durham University on our left and Harvard University from the USA on our right. And to me it looks like Harvard have got away just the quicker. Durham, um, they've probably had a few um, more dominant races throughout the progression over the five days here. So it's about a length at the moment to Harvard. Both crews have settled onto their race pace. We quite often see crews up high through the ratings for the first 20, 25 strokes of the race. They'll then settle onto a race pace. And both crews actually moving at quite similar speeds through this middle part. Um, and it might all come down to the sprint as we saw in that previous race for the final few strokes. It looks like it could be getting slightly bigger. Let's see. Wowie, what a push there from Durham University. They've gone from one length down now to two thirds of a length down. They've managed to close about a seat on the Harvard crew, but have they gone too early? It can be very tempting to try and push your way back into the race too early and run out of beans for that final sprint, Greg. Well, Harvard had one of these close races yesterday. They, they hung on. They made it by a, a few feet past Oxford Brooks. Now they have another British university going at them. As we see the face there is Zoe Evans in that coxing seat. She looks calm, but she'll be pushing that crew on, trying to get more and more out of them. We know they've got the pace in the final 200 metres, but a couple of geese that they're having to contend with there. That one might have thrown them off their rhythm. Durham University will try and push their way back into this one. Well, Lucas Clark in the back seat of the Harvard boat looked like he hit one of those Canada geese trying to slow him down but I think Harvard look like they're gonna have this as Durham are sprinting towards the line trying to close this gap as they come into the closing stages the last couple of strokes and Harvard hang on for that win it's just about a length as they cross the line ahead of Durham University the Harvard boys lay back and celebrate The Chinese national rowing team on the Berkshire station. And they are against Hollandia, the Netherlands boat. This is a big moment for Chinese rowing, you sense. A win at Henny Royal Regatta. Laid out a marker for them and for Steve Redgrave and for Paul Thompson as well, the head coach there. I love the way the Dutch row, they often have that real sort of ease. They want to just lever the boat along. They're not bullying the boat, they're not bullying the blades, not bullying the water, working with it. But they're under pressure from the Chinese who've had a really impressive start in. This is one of the boats where his supreme technical eye will be honed in, and you can see it's very, very parallel, the way all of the oars are moving, the athletes moving the bodies up and down. There's no inefficiency there, there's no extra movements, there's no real kind of extra tugging, great connection on the feet as well. Really good quad sculling from that Chinese quad. This could be a very significant win for them. Little moment of history for Henry Raw Regatta and for Chen, Zhang, Lu and Koi, who are going to win for the first time ever. A final is won by a boat from China at the Henry Raw Regatta. Paul Thompson and Sir Steve Redgrave's new programme obviously taking effect. A good win for them in the Princess Grace Challenge Cup. Oxford Brooks University on the Bark Station and there's another Dutch boat on the Buck Station. And we're off and running in the Ladies Challenge Plate final here at Henry Raw Regatta. And this will be absolutely ferocious at the start, won't it? They'll be going hell for leather past and out of Temple Island, trying to seize the early initiative. It'll be absolutely brutal for the first couple of minutes. Well, Oxford Brooks on the Berkshire station, furthest away from the camera, are shading it at the moment. This is going to be a 
very, very tight one as things stand. Now a little move again, actually, from Oxford Brooks University. You can see there, just uh, stepping through another gear. Oxford Brooks University won this in 5.58 last year, and they won't be much slower than that this time round. Looking at what they've done in the first half of this race, they've got a length lead. They've got the big crowds on the Berkshire Bank now, urging them home. They have a, a big home crowd as well, just up the road for them, Oxford University. And Oxford Brooks are looking in control of this one. They've been asked lots of questions, though, by the Dutch. And they're still being asked questions in front of Stewart's last couple of hundred metres now in the ladies' challenge plate final. Oxford Brooks University, you can see the cox there, Harry Brightmore, and he stretched it out again. And that is a fine race from them. Attacking all the way, you can see a lot of exhaustion, all of the rowers here, but the Oxford Brooks guys, they had more in the tank. They attacked it from the start and they're attacking it right to the line. Brilliantly done from Harry Brightmore, the Cox, and the Oxford Brooks University boat to win the ladies' challenge plate. Two in a row for them, 2018 and now 2019. One of the biggest and oldest trophies in the cabinet is the Grand Challenge Cup. It's a very small entry this year, but it's high quality. Great Britain and New Zealand. But here is the best of the afternoon's races. Augustin Diaz and Axel Hack from Argentina are racing the Dutch pair, Michael Oyen and Mitchell Steenman. They're forging straight down the course. Bit of a wiggle there at the start. Yeah, that was like one just went slightly. I think Mitchell Steenman went first and then uh, Michael Oyen went second. But the pair seems to be going straight down now. That's a pretty good start by the Dutch as well. Yep, slipped out from this angle. It looks like they just slipped a little bit. And we'll see shortly the end of the island. He's got the advantage. Look, that's a pretty clear lead from the Dutch. I mean, I think the Dutch pair could raw away and win this as they like, you know, just. Yeah, I mean, both pairs yesterday, the Argentinians, when they raced against the Irish pair, they had to rate it very high, they had to match that rate for a long time, so both pairs kept it very high. They're coming right back into it here, and this angle kind of shows us, I think both bowers are fairly, fairly level here. We'll see a side shot in a second, but that's some great racing in that second quarter of the race. You know what, the Argentinians are throwing that form book out the window and they've actually come right back into this race. And I think their bow ball is slightly ahead here. But they put the Dutch into pressure. Can they crack them? And at the moment, this is an upset. Oh, what a feeling. Look, they've just cracked them. They've gone to clear water. They probably really kept their heads in the game and didn't give up through the middle of the race. And they're running much better than the Dutch guys on the left-hand side of your screen. I think they look slicker. And to be honest, the Dutch probably think they've broken them as well because they're slowing down at a rate of knots. They're still winding in, Martin. They're still going for that line. No one's told them the four lengths up. It's been metronomic as we go to the finish camera there. There's the pair from Argentina, Diaz and Hack, coming through to the finish. An incredible turnaround and victory. Certainly wouldn't have expected to have won by so much. Maybe might not have been the favourites for this race. And we wait for the Dutch pair to cross the line. They heard the buzzer and they wound down. And Mitchell, Steenman and Michael Oyen hang their heads. Well, in the 180th year of Henley Regatta, this is the race where it all began. In 1839, the Grand Challenge Cup was first raced for, and 180 years later, we've got two of the world's best eights on the blocks and ready to go. Two international eights, New Zealand with the black boat at the top of your picture, Leander Club and Oxford Brooks, the British eight on this Buckinghamshire station nearest to us in the yellow boat. I mean, this is fantastic, isn't it? It's all of the energy, the most powerful athletes in the world working in the fastest boat class that we have here. I love the way the stern pair and the British aid on this side move together, the two Brooks athletes there, really trying to make sure that they stretch out and give their crew a lead, giving an athlete like Mo Spihi sitting there in the fore seat the chance to put those wattage down. Look at him. He is really, really focused. And New Zealand look to be coming through at the moment. This is a fantastic start for the Kiwis. They couldn't overturn the British at this regatta, could they, Matt? Well, you know what? This is the danger zone for the British eight, and this is where the Kiwis are probably going to try to make their big move. 
And as you say, having the experience of somebody like double Olympic gold medalist uh, Hamish Bond sitting in the two seat, I'm expecting that experience and encouragement is going to be motivating them right here. And at the moment, the Kiwis are stretching out. This is a phenomenal row by the New Zealanders, Matt. Absolutely, and I think the Brits really need to respond now, don't they? The gap is starting to look like it might open up to um, a little bit of clear water, and you just don't need that. So now's the time for the British to respond. Can all those watts sitting through that boat, average weight of 89 kilos through the boat, can that respond now to the challenge of the Kiwis? Well, this is a real upset for the British eight, and this is a real triumph for the Kiwis if they can hold on to this kind of position. And I think the excitement in that that boat must be absolutely palpable. They, you know, they really are in the position they want to be in, and then they know that they've got a bit in hand if the Brits can accelerate. They were only one or two seconds over the second 500, uh, sorry, this, over the last thousand in Poznan, only one or two seconds slower than the Brits, and they've got more than that here. They've got three or four seconds at the moment. We are seeing the emergence of a new power in men's rowing. New Zealand men's eight. They won the eights back in the 1972 Olympics. They won the eights in 1982 and 1983. They couldn't manage to re reproduce that medal in 1984. The eight, such a big event for New Zealand and the British desperately trying to make up. But the New Zealanders are making history. The legacy in the eights is coming good. This is a new New Zealand eight we are seeing. Well, it's a triumph, isn't it? 33-year-old Hamish Bond, 40-year-old Marty Dreifde, multiple Olympic medals between them, adding to this as they spurred on towards the finish. Look at that. It's a display of great rowing. Really to get a huge appreciation from the crowd here and the Brits have got nothing to respond with, they're down. Come up to the finish line, it's the eight from New Zealand coming up to the finish line. The All Blacks are going to take the Grand Challenge Cup from the British on their home water. What a sensational race from the New Zealanders. The King's Cup has been one of the highlights of the 2019 regatta. Eight nations from around the world coming together to race for the new version of the trophy started a century ago. The final is USA versus Germany. So it's good camaraderie between them all and off they go. They're clean off the start. And at the moment, the Americans just in the rhythm, just settling into a nice rhythm, and they have not let the Germans get away. There's still great contact there for the Americans, Jess. Really close race. Just looking down the American boat there, there's got some big guys in the middle of that boat. Four-man John Lamb, five-man Jared Tainter. They're big, strong guys. They're obviously not shying away from their training at the moment, and they've kept themselves right in contention. This is a cracking race, half a canvas, I'd say. Expect to see them come down in around about uh, six and a half minutes. And the Germans are under real pressure, aren't they? Lars Vischart, the stroke man, trying to dig in. But the American bows are in front. It's the race of the day. Race of the day, the race of the century. The King's Cup last won by the Australians 100 years ago today. This is the focal point of Henley Regatta in 2019. A celebration of peace in 1919, a celebration of rowing in 2019 and it's really serving us up with a great race usa on the left of the picture germans on the right can't split them who's going to get this down the enclosure they're going to hear big roars in one second they're going to come down to see all these people in their deck chairs who's going to push their bow ball ahead and i say right now the americans just squeezed it half a bow ball the americans have but the germans aren't letting it go you've got experience in that boat what's the five man corporal tim Grumman, the 30 year old who's olympic champion from london 2012 just down the road at Dorney Lake, can he inspire his crewmates? Caroline Mayer, the coxswain, is just crying out for more effort, but the Americans are moving away. They really had them slipped a seat or two. Has the German crew got any answer to this? Up, 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 up. So the American crew rowing in a boat called Overlord, named after the operation for the armed forces in the Second World War to free Northern Europe, the invasion of Normandy, and they at the moment are leading. The Americans on the right of your picture, the Germans on the left. It's a historic race in the final of the King's Cup. And so far, the American crew look to be heading. I don't think the Germans can come back from that. In the bows of the American boat, it's midshipman second class, Alexandra Valenci Martinson, who's coming up to the line. She can sense it, she can feel it, she can smell the line coming up, the noise for the crowds. Here's the finish camera. The King's Cup will be won by the crew from the American Navy. The American armed forces take this historic victory ahead of the German armed forces. What a fantastic race in the highlight race, the, the standout race of the regatta. That's it for Henley Royal Regatta 2019. It's been amazing covering the regatta once again. You can watch any of the races back on our YouTube channel. 
But from this year, from finals day and from Henley on Thames, until next year, it's goodbye. I know it's gonna take some time Until it all feels right Till we find our way We're gonna make it to the other side Where the future is bright We can find a way Ha ha ha.